On today's show, the Houston Rockets signing free agent center Willie Cauley-Stein, what that signing means for the Houston Rockets, what that means for their overall center depth chart. We're going to take a look at that, and we're going to take a look at Alperin Shingun and the absolute clinic that he is putting on playing overseas for the Turkish national team. All of that and more coming up right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. The Houston Rockets select... Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Every time I step on that floor, I'm coming. You're getting somebody who's going to come in with a chip on their shoulder, somebody who's going to come, come in and compete from day one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up? Welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian, a credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays, host of the State of the Rockets podcast, as well as the founder of ClutchCityControlRoom.com. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. This is Apple, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including including YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. On today's show, the Houston Rockets signing free agent big man Willie Cauley-Stein. What Willie Cauley-Stein brings to the table for this Houston Rockets team, what his signing means for the Houston Rockets roster as a whole, and we're going to take a look at the Rockets' current big man depth because there's a lot of bigs on this roster. So where do all of those guys ultimately fall in the pecking order for this Houston Rockets team? Also, we'll take a look at Alper and Shingun and the absolute clinic, the master class performances that he's, pl- that he's having playing for the Turkish national team overseas. We're going to talk about all of that. So let's start with Willie Cauley sign was report really Cauley Stein, Willie Cauley sign Stein. I'm, I'm getting tongue tied already 45 seconds into the episode. It's awesome. Willie Cauley Stein was signed by the Houston Rockets or reportedly is going to be signed by the Houston Rockets as reported first reported by Sham Sharania of the athletic and This was something that we'd speculated on quite a bit, right? Was, you know, were the Rockets going to make a move in free agency to bring in another big man just because they didn't like that's been kind of the the big question mark hole on the roster. Like you look up and down this entire Rockets roster, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a a lot of solid players at the two guard spot, obviously with Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, you have a ton, uh, you know, a plethora of guys that are going to be able to, you know, fill up all the wing minutes for this Rockets team. But then there's maybe some question marks about that five spot, right? Very clearly, Alperin Shingun is your starting center. But as far as who's backing him up, who's absorbing the extra minutes behind him, and what this team may ultimately need by way of having, uh, you know, backup bigs who can provide something stylistically a little bit different as far as the way that they play play the game when they're on the floor at that five spot, that was kind of the big question mark for this Houston Rockets team. So they went out, they snatched up Willie Cauley, Willie Cauley Stein. So looking at what does WCS bring to the table? So he's a big that gives you size. He gives you length. He gives you vertical spacing. You know, he's your prototypical rim running big. Now the problem is, is the moment this signing was announced, somebody who used to cover or somebody who covers the Dallas Mavericks messaged me and immediately said, please don't get caught up in the Willie Cauley Stein hype. He is the best hypothetical center ever. That made me lose my mind. So I'm not sit, I'm not going to sit here and completely gas up Willie Cauley Stein. I like the signing because I like the idea of the Rockets having kind of this almost like smorgasbord of bigs to back up Alper and Shingun because each one of them kind of brings something different and unique to the table. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in segment two, kind of going through what each one of the bigs brings to the table for this Houston Rockets team potentially, right? Because that's the other thing is this roster is not set in stone yet, right? This is very much still a training camp roster. The Rockets are actually over the uh, allotted 20 roster spots currently with the signing or the reported signing of Willie Colley Stein. What that means is the Rockets have yet to put pen to paper. The signing is not official. Nothing has been inked yet because the Rockets do still need to waive the guys from the Dallas Mavericks Christian Wood trade. 
And again, the three names that are going to be likely waived in there, Marquise Chris, Sterling Brown, Trey Burke, uh, you know, those guys are going to be, those guys are going to be gone. So, uh, you know, Boban Marjanovic looks like he's going to be the only guy that's going to stick around, you know, in the aftermath of the Christian Wood deal. So it's not necessarily a worry. They're, they're going to have the roster spots to make something like that happen. Uh, it's probably just some bureaucratic red tape or some stalling out, just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen elsewhere in the off season before officially making it official that those three guys are going to be waived, therefore creating the potential roster spot for Willie Colley Stein to sign his one year deal with the Houston Rockets. So he brings you size. He brings you length. He brings you vertical spacing, best theoretical center ever. You know, as far as what the signing truly means, I, I, I kind of view this as almost the, the Rockets are maybe almost hedging a little bit on Usman Garuba, you know, because we look at Alper and Shingun, he's very clearly your starting center. He's the big man. He's going to, you know, eat up a bulk of the minutes. But then after that, there's some question marks, right, about who, you know, what are the Rockets getting out of their backup five spot? And so not only did they extend a training camp offer to Bruno Fernando, they're now throwing, you know, Willie Colley Stein a one year deal. He's going to, you know, compete for a roster spot in training camp. Maybe it's all for not. Maybe none of this matters. Maybe it's a complete, we don't have the specifics on the deal yet. Maybe it's just completely non guaranteed money and the Rockets are not actually committing anything of relevance to Willie Colley Stein. But what I do like is the Rockets are not content they are not just giving out it goes back to what steven silas said last week in his exclusive interview with matt thomas from sports talk 790 where steven silas referenced the fact that nobody's getting anything for free this season right guys are going to have to work and earn their spots in the rotation and i think by by way of the rockets bringing in other bigs right the fact that obviously lp kind of has his spot secured in the starting lineup but for usman garuba a guy who just hasn't had the chance to really prove himself has battled with a few different injuries that kind of stuff to have to go into training camp knowing full well that his spot is not guaranteed that he has not shown enough to be be guaranteed a rotation spot moving forward with this rockets team and to have competition for him in training camp right guys like willie Colley stein who could very much still want to carve out him you know carve out a spot on an nba roster guys like Bruno Fernando, who's, you know, getting an Exhibit 10 deal and effectively going to training camp on a prove-it deal to try and earn a two-way roster spot. Like, guys like that are going to be working their asses off trying to earn a spot on this Rockets roster, and hopefully that will kind of light a fire under Usman Garuba so that we get to see the best version of him so that he understands, hey, like, I've got I've to really start showing what I can do to be able to solidify my spot within this roster, within this Rockets organization. Otherwise, if I get beat out in, you know, training camp by Willie Colley Stein and Bruno Fernando, like if that happens to Usma Garuba, he may not be long for the NBA world. Maybe there's another team that would, you know, take a flyer on him, you know, be interested in giving him some rotation minutes, but Hopefully what this does is it generates that atmosphere of competitiveness of guys who are really fighting for their spots on the Rockets roster. And again, lets us see the best version of all of these guys, not just Usman Garuba, but also potentially a better version of Willie Colley Stein, the best version of Bruno Fernando, right? Guys who are all competing against one another to carve out that, that little bit of minutes left over backing up. Alper and Shingun. So coming up, I do want to talk about the Rockets center depth chart as it kind of looks right now, what each one of these guys potentially brings to the table as the backup behind Alper and Shingun. And then in our final segment, we'll also take a look at what Alper and Shingun is doing currently overseas because he is cooking for the Turkish national team. We're going to talk about all of that and more in just a moment after a message from our friends over at Built Bar, because when it comes to protein bars, Got to check out Built Bar. They're the number one protein bar on the market, and for a very good reason. Every single bar is coated in 100% delicious chocolate. They're soft. They're easy to chew. They're not gritty or chocolate like other protein bars on the market. Every single bar is low-cal, low-sugar, high-protein, high-fiber. Amazing if you're on a keto diet. Amazing if you're trying to cut back a little bit, maybe lose a little, little bit of weight. And they've got these, like, they've just got so many different flavors that you can pick from. You got cookies and cream, strawberry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter, strawberry, salted caramel. The list goes on and on. My personal favorite is coconut brownie chunk. But you really can't go wrong with any single bar on their menu. And you can check them out. Just go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your very next order of the best tasting protein bars on the market. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, 
let's take a look at the overall depth chart kind of as it stands right now for the Houston Rockets five spot, right? For their center position. And I think it's very easy to look at the surface and say, all right, Alper and Shagoon, he's your starter, right? He's going to absorb a bulk of the minutes, but trying to understand what the Rockets may be trying to achieve outside of the minutes where Alper and Shingun is on the floor could be a really you know fun little exercise here as we're kind of taking a look at the other guys on this Houston Rockets roster. So I think it's very, again, very safe to assume Alper and Shingun, he's going to get anywhere from you know 28 to, to 30 plus minutes a night. After that, though, the rest of the names that are currently on the Rockets roster, you've got Usman Garuba, so Uzi, you've got Boban Marjanovic, You've got the reported signing of Willie Cauley-Stein to a one-year deal. Again, we don't know the specifics on this, so it could very easily be just a one-year, fully non-guaranteed contract, essentially a show up to training camp, prove it, try to fight for a roster spot. If you're not any good, sayonara, we're going to cut you, wave you, go home. So there's that. And then there's the uh, Bruno Fernando being signed to an Exhibit 10 deal, which is effectively, again, another uh, a training camp contract, a chance for him to show up prove what he can do for the Houston Rockets. The Rockets have yet to commit that secondary two-way spot that they have to another player, so they do still have that to work with. So as it stands right now, you know, I'm hard-pressed to imagine the Rockets rolling into the season with four different, four of their 15 roster spots committed to big men in in Shingun, Garuba, Boban Marjanovic, and Willie Cauley-Stein. And then not only that, but a fifth spot, a two-way spot, potentially committed to Bruno Fernando. But that's kind of the way that it's looking right now. And again, a lot of this almost leads me to believe that they might seriously be kind of hedging a little bit on, on what Usman Garuba may ultimately be able to provide to this team. I think the hope for myself and for a lot of Rockets fans this season coming in is that Alperin Shingun is going to be the workhorse. He's going to carry the majority of the load at the five spot. And then we would get, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes a night, if that maybe, of Usman Garuba backing up Alperin Shingun. And then whatever's left over outside of that, maybe some, you know, some small ball minutes here and there with Jabari Smith Jr. at the five, or maybe some ultra small ball lineups where you've got like Tari or Jay Sean Tate playing the five situationally dependent on matchups. And then there could be some nights, right, where, Boban Marjanovic, he's kind of that utility, he's that kind of utility big, right? Where you plug and play him for certain matchups for very brief stretches because he's just, you know, this gigantic behemoth of a man and you're able to maybe utilize an advantage of having him on the floor and you just dump the ball into a few, dump the ball into the post for a few possessions and he's going to get you some easy buckets. Then you look at, again, Willie Cauley-Stein, what he provides. Talked about in segment one. He gives you size, he gives you length, he gives you vertical spacing. He's kind of your prototypical rim-running athletic big, can play above the rim a little bit using his length, using his size. So as far as the individual skill sets that each of these guys provide, right, LP is the guy who can do a little bit of everything, right? He's kind of your your blanket jack-of-all-trades big man. He doesn't exactly play above the rim, so maybe I shouldn't say he does a little bit of everything, but... He's going to be your de facto starter, right? So then you look at the backups and you look at how different each one of those guys are from what Alp and Shingun provides. So you go from Alp to hype, you know, at least right now, tentatively, hopefully the de facto backup center, which should be Usman Garuba, at least right now leading into training camp. That's the prediction. Usman Garuba is a defensive anchor, right? He's a guy who's incredibly versatile, switchable on defense, can guard multiple positions on that side of the floor without getting burned. He has the body size, the weight to be able to guard bigger, stronger players. He's a bit of an undersized five when you think about it, right? Because his natural position, and he said this before, is more so at that four spot. But in the Rockets' current system, in their current scheme, the things that they're trying to run, Uzi is a five. So... He backs up Alper and Shingun, and you get more of a defensive identity with him on the floor, right? You maybe lose a little bit of what, you lose a lot of it of, of what Alper and Shingun gives you offensively. But the hope is that's where we can see Usman Garuba start to take some steps, some strides forward in his game. Because we saw some flashes out of him defensively this past season. Even though we never got to see it on a consistent basis, we did see flashes where he looked good defensively, where the instincts are there where his ability to recover, block a shot, step out on the perimeter, on switches, guard smaller players, a lot of that is there. The the foot speed, the ability to stick with smaller guys, the switchability, we've seen all of that at play 
occasionally. We just haven't seen him put it together over an extended period, over an extended stretch to this point just yet. So that's what the hope is for this next season, as well as seeing him take that step forward offensively, right? Because that's kind of, to this point, still the biggest question mark about Uzi's game is can he give you enough offensively to warrant how good he's supposed to be, right? How good the potential is of what he provides you as a defensive anchor, as somebody who can be that really switchy big and give you a lot of versatility and give you a lot of, I don't know, a lot of potential on that side of the basketball. Offensively, the, the game has not looked great. It hasn't looked super polished. You know, he, at his best, he should be able to be a five-out big, stretch the defense. Um, we've seen him make some reads and some passes offensively, kind of out of the middle of the floor, or out of the short roll, that kind of thing. But he's never going to be like a legitimate pick. I don't think he's ever going to be like a legitimate pick and roll threat to where, you know, he's going to set a screen and roll hard to the rim and, and finish in and around the rim. That's just not his bag, right? That's not necessarily what he provides. And, and if he's able to add it to his game over time, cool, but he doesn't even need to do that to be a serviceable backup behind Alper and Shingun. So then you go from Usman Garuba's skill set, right? And you go to Boban Marjanovic. You're not throwing Boban in there to play defense. Like, you're just not, right? You, you, if, you, if you have Boban on the floor, you're playing a deep drop, and you're probably going to get burned a lot defensively if you have Boban on the floor. There might be certain schemes where you can get away with running him uh, against like a, you know, Joel Embiid or a Nikola Jokic. And maybe the drop scheme doesn't hurt you quite as much if, if, he's, a, if he's up against one of those guys, although those guys can both space it, stretch it all the way out to the three-point line. There's, again, it's kind of a train wreck if you're trying to run Boban Marjanovic defensively. Uh, there's only so many different things that you can do with a guy of that size on defense without getting absolutely picked apart by opposing NBA defenses. So what does Boban give you? He gives you that utility player offensively, right? Where you throw Boban in the game and he might be able to get you some easy buckets, completely dominate the game on the offensive side, give you a bunch of free buckets. Think of all the times that Boban has played for the Dallas Mavericks and played against the Houston Rockets and he gets subbed into the game and there's literally nobody on the floor who can check him because he's just bigger and taller and stronger than everybody else out there. He's basically dropping the basketball into the the basket and scoring points at will. That's why if you go by per 36 stats, Boban, Boban Marjanovic is the greatest player of all time. So that's why advanced stats can also be a little bit misleading. So his role is going to be very minimal on this Rockets team. I think they may use him situationally. He may also just sit on the bench, right? And kind of be that chemistry guy, that veteran presence in the locker room, good for team vibes, all that kind of stuff. Not necessarily an enforcer, if you will, but just somebody to have around these young guys who's going to keep the vibes incredible and, and hopefully keep the good times flowing for the team. That's and you need guys like that. You need guys that are that are that are likable that can keep the team kind of even keeled at times when things kind of go south. So he's probably more so of a locker room presence than anything, but that's at least what he gives you as far as his on the court production. And then you go to Willie Colley Stein. And offensively, he unlocks something that, you know, none of the other Rockets bigs at this point on the roster gives them, which is a, a big who can play above the rim, who a big who gives them some of that vertical spacing. And this could very well be an experiment by the Rockets front office where they they looked up and down at their fives and they were like, all right, nobody here can play above the rim. We have two guys in Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green who are going to be lethal in the pick and roll maybe we should go out there and just see who's available to maybe be a lob threat for them over the top of the defense. Because KPJ operating with a true lob threat could be a sight to behold, right? We saw James Harden time and time again generate paydays for guys and make guys look like potential all-stars by just running pick and roll game with them. KPJ has that type of gravity and he's got that type of court vision and awareness and ability to kind of be shifty enough within, you know, within what he does offensively to distract the defense, to give guys like a Willie Colley Stein the chance to flourish by simply setting a good hard screen, rolling hard to the basket, and just being taller and longer than everybody else and going up and grabbing a pass over the top of the defense and yamming it home. So that's what Willie Colley Stein kind of unlocks offensively for this Rockets team. I would not expect much more out of him. In fact, I'm, I, I want to preface and set the bar incredibly low for Willie Colley Stein, right? Maybe he shows up in training camp, looks really good. Maybe he surprises, but I'd set the bar incredibly low. Defensively, 
you know, has left a lot to be desired in his career, should be a better defender than he is for somebody of his size and frame. And, you know, kind of he's he's agile enough to not be a not, you know, not get completely roasted if he switched out onto an island. But I've never been blown away by his actual I don't know, defensive fortitude, if you will. So I don't think he's somebody that you're bringing in for a defensive edge when he's on the floor, potentially. And then lastly, there's Bruno Fernando, right? Who, even Bruno flashed some potential last season, right? There was a lot going on there. I thought that, obviously, he was just kind of a throwaway in the Boston Celtics deal centered around Dennis Schroeder and... Apologize. uh, Centered around uh, Dennis Schroeder and why am I blanking on Houston Rockets' legendary center's name? Oh my goodness, that's an incredible gaff on my part daniel tice there we go i was like I, I didn't even finish typing it i was like i started typing and immediately found it daniel tice there we go wow clearly i need more caffeine but it felt like bruno was just kind of a throwaway in that deal and ultimately maybe that was the case for the boston celtics but i think he showed showcased enough that the rockets were kind of intrigued right they're like all right come back on a training camp deal let's see what we have with you Offensively, he looked really polished. Offensively, he looked like he knew what he was able to do, putting the ball on the floor, getting to the rim, being aggressive, getting to the free throw line. Uh, He had that, you know, coming out party against the Mavericks where he looked absolutely absurd. And the biggest part of his game is we still haven't seen him, at least with the Rockets at the NBA level in an actual game setting, step out to that three-point line. And that's something that if he has as polished of an offensive package as it kind of looks like he does— if he can also stretch a defense out to the three-point line, that gives the Rockets some really interesting options as far as a backup big to Alper and Shingun that kind of maybe doesn't give a similar skill set because Alpi is very much a pass-first big. He's got that, you know, old-school back-to-the-basket post-play. Like, there's a lot going on there that Alpi does that is very different from many of the bigs at today's NBA level. That said, Bruno gives them potentially another dynamic-looking big if... He can piece that together and kind of be that stretch five big in addition to the post play that he has operating out of the pick and roll, not necessarily as a vertical spacing lob threat, but just somebody who's comfortable operating out of the short roll, who can create for himself, put the ball on the floor a little bit, make the right read, the right, the right pass, that kind of thing. So the Rockets have a lot of diff, a lot of different types of talent at that backup five spot behind Alper and Shingun. It'll be interesting to see who gets the primary nod I still think it you know it's very much it's very much Usman Garuba's position to lose as far as the backup five role goes but it does kind of feel like the Rockets may be hedging their bets a little bit as far as what the future holds for that backup five position coming up I want to talk about the current five for the Houston Rockets and that's Alperin Shingun the absolute display that he's putting on overseas for the Turkish national team we're going to talk about his performance what's really stood out some things that I've observed watching what LP has done overseas we're going to get there in just one moment and final segment here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, appreciate you for checking out Locked On Rockets. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search Locked On Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember the mantra, for the house, for the team, for the algorithm. And in honor of our awesome little mantra here at Locked On Rockets, go check out Daniel House's new album that he just dropped, Tetraphobia. It's on Apple Music. I've shared the link a couple of times. It's all over his Twitter page. Uh, Lighthouse and 60 on my wrist are probably my two favorite tracks from the album. Go let me know your favorite track from the album. Put it in the YouTube comments. I'm curious to hear. It was, it was, it was a good album. It was a solid listen all the way through. So shout out to Daniel House Jr. Uh, for his work, you know, Houstonian all the way through. Wish him the best of luck with the, uh, the I guess, the Philadelphia Rockets that Daryl Morey is assembling out there on the East Coast. But, uh, Quick little announcement before we talk about Alper and Shingun, because it ties into Alper and Shingun. Uh, myself, Roosh Williams, and Dave Hardesty, Clutch fans, are running this new thing called, uh, it's on a platform called uh, Watch Playback, and they're basically Rockets watch parties. And it's a really cool platform. It allows us the opportunity to run back both old games and live ca- live games, live content, uh, to watch alongside you guys as fans. So we, it's basically Twitter spaces, mixed with live streaming, mixed with Twitch, mixed with like a little bit of video. Like it's really, really cool. We've done a few rooms already. They're a ton of fun. You get you get a chat box. You get the audience. You can come up on stage and chat with us about what's going on in the games. We've done retro watches of old Rockets games. We've done Rockets games from last season. So it's a ton of fun. This week, uh, August 15th through 21st, we've got three rewatches scheduled. Tuesday night, we're doing a rewatch at 8 p.m. Central Time. We're doing KPJ's triple-double against the Sacramento Kings. 
Thursday night, we're doing Jalen Green's 40-piece against the Atlanta Hawks. And then Saturday at 11.30 Central Time, 11.30 in the morning Central Time, we're doing a retro watch of Game 1 of Rockets Jazz from the 1994 Western Conference Finals. So if you're interested in any of those games, check it out. I'm going to put the link to the room to sign up in the description. You just go sign up for the room, create an account. It's totally free. Um, when we do the retro watches, it doesn't require anything. If we do live games moving forward, you'll be asked to authenticate. You'll be asked to like put in like a, you know, your cable, your cable provider, or your league pass subscription or something like that. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it once we start doing live content again. But it's a ton of fun. Go check it out. Link in the description. And because of that, we're going to be streaming Alper and Shingun's next game, which it sounds like it'll be 1 p.m. Central Time Friday. Turkey is playing Greece. And I believe Giannis and Tedekupo is supposed to be playing in that game. So should be Alpi versus Giannis. Should be a ton of fun. Be, be on the lookout on social media for us to yell about that. So with that, Alper and Shingun has looked really good, right? And this, I, like, there's a lot of, you know... <sighs> A lot of pressure, I think, being put on, like, you know, what? oh, what's the leap that Jalen Green is going to take this season? What's the leap that KPJ is going to take this season? How are those guys going to look? What's Jabari going to look like in his rookie year? All this. Alper and Shingun, I think, is poised to take a really substantial leap this season. And I feel that way because we already kind of knew and saw that LP looked incredibly polished last year, right? At, at times, he very much looked like a rookie, right? Doing, you know, rookie mistakes, being overly aggressive, you know, being a little too careless, a little too, maybe not sloppy with the basketball, but trying to do a little bit too much with the ball at times, be it, you know, handling it or be it trying to thread the needle on a pass, things like that. But LP already looked like incredibly polished as a player. And so to have an entire NBA offseason to refine his game, to work on the things that he knows he needs to work on and to come back into the fold this next season, knowing full well, all right, this is my, like, this is my starting spot now. I don't have to share this position with Christian Wood anymore. I'm the starting center. And now I get to play alongside guys like KPJ and Jalen Green for much more of the game than I used to, right? One of the things he said last season was that he and Jalen weren't getting a ton of minutes together because of the way that the because of the way that the lineups were done and because of the way that the minutes were distributed. Jalen and Alpi rarely, if ever, played together at the same time on the floor. So for Alper and Shingun to have all of these guys around him, Jabari Smith Jr., probably more than likely Eric Gordon in the starting lineup, you know, all these shooters around him, it's going to open up so much for him. And in, you know, in, in this, you know, Turkish basketball action being played overseas, he has looked really good and he's flashed a lot of, you know, one, he, one, he looks bigger. He looks like he's added some strength and he looks like it's, it's really allowing him to be even more effective in post-ups where he's just, you know, he's so quick to backing guys down. He has ability to, get to his spot, right? You know, get the defender on his hip and then just power through them and get all the way back to his sweet spot at the basket. That was something that we saw him do a lot last year. But, you know, at the NBA level, there are guys that are, you know, bigger and stronger than Al P is. And at times we didn't see him, you know, be able to fully muscle through some of those guys. So it'll be interesting to see how that strength uh, kind of translates back to the NBA. But there were some highlights that, you know, have done the rounds that have looked really, in, you know, really promising, really interesting. There was one play where Al P, uh, it was an out of bounds play and they were inbounding the ball and Al P just kind of came curling around the perimeter and just didn't stop. Like at no point did he stop and kind of, you know, pause and wait to survey for a pass. Right? He just kept coming around the perimeter like a wing player, got the inbounds pass and just trucked it all the way into the basket, at, you know, for two, like up through the contact. So... Seeing, you know, some some new wrinkles kind of in Alpi's game, or at least how the Turkish team has decided to utilize them has been cool. But the one thing that's really stood out, and this is something that he's used routinely now, is he has added this, like, I, I, don't, I don't quite want to call it a floater, because it's not really a floater. But it's like a push shot. It's almost like a shot put. That's, that's more what, it's, what it is. Where he's done this move a handful of times now, where he kind of, like, starts his usual... Like he'll back in, you know, back to the basket, back a defender down, get right in front of the rim and then spin and, and catch his defender off guard and then just kind of like shot put the ball up. And it's not a shot because he's not turning with both hands and like, you know, actually shooting the basketball and he's not going off glass. So it looks kind of floatery, but I'm going to stick with shot put because I think that's the best definition for it. 
He's used that coming, you know, spinning out of out of post up. He's used that going off the dribble where he's taken a defender off the dribble, which we saw him do a lot this past season. But there were a lot of times where he took a defender off the dribble and had to go all the way to the rim. Didn't really have like a stop and pop kind of move right there in the paint. So if he has this little like shot put now in his bag to be able to throw bigger defenders off to, to start the drive and, and, you know, have a defender just go sailing right past him and he's able to stop on a dime and just give a little shot put and make it consistently. Having that, having another counter in his bag is going to do wonders for him. Because again, think about the times last season where we saw Alp kind of post up and he'd get to his moves and he'd, he'd start, you know, shaking and baking, spinning, turning, whatever. And, you know, he would have to do all of that work and ha he'd basically have to be right at the rim to try and kiss the ball off the glass, right? He, he'd do a lot. And there were a lot of times where he'd do multiple spins. He'd pivot, you know, left shoulder, right shoulder, back to the left shoulder, like trying to get as close to the cup as possible to be able to get the ball right off the glass for two essentially a layup if he's able to do that you know that whole full arsenal of moves the repertoires the counters upon counters the back the fourth over this shoulder over that shoulder and if he's able to do all that and if he doesn't have to be right at the cup right at the rim to make it work to to try and score the ball if he's able to kind of get a little shot put from like five to eight feet away something like that that could be really, really beneficial to his overall offensive bag, a bag that I think we're going to see on full display this next season, because hopefully Steven Silas is able to utilize LP a little bit more so as the post presence that he can be, right, with so many quality shooters around him. Again, if the starting lineup is Jalen, KPJ, Eric Gordon, and Jabari Smith, it's going to be throw the ball into LP. let him post up, and if you send a second defender at him, somebody is wide open for a three ball. And I'm hoping that that's going to be at least some of what we see out of Steven Silas and the Houston Rockets offense is basically just give the ball to Alpine and let the man work inside because it's either going to be a bucket for him. It's going to be two free throws at the free throw line, or it's going to be a kick out for a wide open three pointer. And that's some of the, what I'm really excited to see out of the Houston Rockets offense coming up this next season. But with that, those are some of the observations from Alperin Shingun playing overseas for Turkey's team, uh, as well as just, you know, thoughts on where the Rockets are at with all the center depth on the current roster. As always, appreciate you for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast. That's Apple, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app, free and available on all platforms. We're also on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But as always, thank you so much for checking out the show. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Oh,